truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. Hey guys, Peter Franson here from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions. Right now I'm going to attempt to examine the Bible and dissect some of the churchy language we can really easily take for granted, digging into history and languages as I'm able to try and get at the heart of the text so that we can hopefully see and then apply at least some of what God has for us in these words today. Now, I'm not formally trained in scripture. I'm just a guy using resources and a questioning mind to try and get at the truth. That's something that we can all do, so I hope you will be doing doing that with me. We are in the book of Philippians, and we've now arrived at chapter 2. We're going to look at verses 1 through 4, and in the ESV that reads, So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. So at the end of chapter 1, Paul instructed the Philippian Christians to live lives worthy of the gospel, he said, united and unafraid of those who had been persecuting them, explaining that the suffering they had been experiencing was in service to God's purposes. Now in chapter 2, Paul shifts focus a little to the internal conflict or division happening from within the Philippian Christian community itself. Verse 1 again says, So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy. We'll pause right there. Uh, although the word if is used here, it's more of an expressive device. Paul is actually assuming that his readers were or naturally should be experiencing everything described here. Encouragement in Christ, comfort from love, participation in the Spirit, affection and sympathy. Living in relationship with Christ produces encouragement. The Greek word uh, translated as encouragement here includes both the idea of comfort and being exhorted, or as we might say, kind of called upward. It was also assumed that they were or should be living out the selfless agape love taught and exemplified by Christ. This being the case, they should have been experiencing comfort given and received by all of them in the community of believers. The Greek phrase translated as participation in the Spirit causes some division among translation scholars. Some versions translate the phrase as fellowship with the Spirit, but it can also be arguably translated as fellowship produced by the Spirit. And the context of human relationships adds more reason to include this idea as part of a broader meaning for the phrase. In other words, while the idea may refer to having relationship with the Holy Spirit, the context and language itself make arguments that it should also refer to having good relationships with fellow believers, produced by the Holy Spirit and parallel to a relationship with Him. The final assumption by Paul is that his readers should have affection and sympathy as common traits among them. Okay, verse 2. Complete my joy, he says, by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Paul calls for his readers to be united in their focus, having the same love that was modeled for them by Christ. And he calls for their unity of mind twice in this verse, which seems to suggest that this was a problem area for the Philippian Christians, as it certainly is for us today. Verse 3 and 4 again say, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Uh, even among Christians, selfish ambition and conceit can thrive as we find ways to sort of spiritualize our selfish agendas. We can get to a place in our minds where we believe that God has chosen us to do something special that will make us stand out from other people. But this verse instructs readers to adjust their mindset and assume that God is doing more significant things in the lives of those around us. That may or may not be the case, but that is what we're being called to assume or consider as a default. Um, we're also meant to include the interests of others in our thoughts and efforts as we tend to our own interests. Now, we're not expected to neglect our own needs or those of our families for the sake of helping and serving others, but consideration of the needs and interests of others should accompany our thoughts for our Ourselves. Okay, so what's in all this, maybe for geeks specifically? 
uh, as I studied these verses and reflected on them a bit, I, I just thought about how as geeks we tend to spend a lot of time in our heads to the neglect of consideration of others, their perspectives and experiences. This is especially true, I think, when we are going through difficult seasons of life. Uh, this last year has been difficult for many people to varying degrees for varying reasons. Um, much of that has been due in some way to COVID-19, but much more of it has been the result of human sin as we all react to changing circumstances. Um, in response to some of nature's difficulties, we as humans uh, have this great tendency to add our own sin to the mix and actually make things much worse than they would merely be just because of the circumstances that are handed to us. Other elements of human sin uh, this year came all on their own without a virus or other cause serving as the catalyst. We've seen fear, hate, and division over politics, procedure, ethnicity, and many more issues. In a climate like this one, I think it can be extremely tempting for us to either retreat altogether or to maybe remain in community with others, but stubbornly focus on our own viewpoint and agenda while we do that, instead of looking for common ground and unity with others in our local churches. What the Holy Spirit seems to highlight here is that if we are truly living in submission, submissive relationship to Christ, we should be naturally feeling compassion and love for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, as is often the case in Scripture, we're not merely being called to behavior modification. That is something that is done by our own strength, and can, we can only get so far just trying to, by, force of, by brute force of will, modify our behavior. Rather, we're being called to an entirely new perspective that flows out of our relationship with Christ, that will naturally produce changes in how we live, how we see life, how we want to live. Now, if you're like me and you just don't naturally feel love and affection for fellow Christians in your local church, I want to, in response to these verses, urge both of us to examine how our thoughts are falling short of this agape love that we're meant to be experiencing and uh, expressing and living out as we have relationship to Christ in re reaction and response to our relationship with, with Christ. Um, I want to urge us to examine how we're falling short. Um, what, and ask us, what's going on? Why, why am I not uh, uh, living out and experiencing this love that, uh, that Christ modeled and that he wants me to experience and, and to live out? Um, I wrote a brief prayer. I want to invite you guys to pray with me just as I finish up. <clears throat> um, God, I don't really know how to love people like you love them. Would you teach me how? through time spent in your word and through other believers in my life that I can learn from. Rescue my heart from its natural, self-centered tendencies and start something new in the way I think and care about even those I disagree with or who have hurt me. Give me a thoughtfulness toward the feelings and concerns of others as I talk or make choices. As I hold to the truth, help me also look for points of agreement and unity with other believers in my life, emphasizing our common ground and common goals whenever possible. Free me from the need to be right or special in the eyes of others, and increasingly shape me to have the kind of vibrant life of love that you have made me for. If you'd like some help finding a good church in your area, I would love to help you do that if I can. Online resources and communities are good supplements, but by nature they just can't speak to your particular situation like relationships in a local church can. The context for almost everything in the New Testament assumes that we're serving and building purposeful relationships in a local church. So whether you're in a church that just kind of lacks Bible-based intentionality or maybe not attending any church at all, if I can help you get connected connected to an authentic, compassionate, Bible-oriented church, I want to do that. Uh, you can email me at paeter at spiritblade.com, and we can look at some websites of churches in your area together.